Tonight, my guest is a typical politician. He has risen through the ranks, very engaging, and can really do a lot of banter on any topic on politics. He's a former staff of the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GMPC, and he's popularly known as Sir John, a name he earned by association from his background. Tonight, he's here with us, and after doing politics a few hours ago, he is on PM Express personality profile to share his life with us. Perhaps he would also want to tell us what he thinks about the graveyard at Sumdre Park and where they intend to bury their party leaders who become presidents. Stay with us and send your comments ahead facebook.com slash multitv Ghana and facebook.com multitv PM Express. You can also send us text 1760. Welcome to PM Express, Sir John. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Your name, Sir John. How did you come by that name? Well, uh, I mean, it is something that a lot of people have asked. But, um, you know, like something, I've always learned to guard it, you know, with the strictest of um, secrecy. Um, something made an error of telling the wife where his strength, you know, was, and that sent him to, to, to his grave. And therefore, it, we, we, let's wait. So, Sir John will still remain uh, mythical. Yes, indeed. Right, and so, <laughs> could you also rephrase what you're, you're, you're called, really? That's right. Tell us about yourself. How did the interest in politics begin? Well, the, I think that I, I, you know, I grew up in a very small and humble village called Sakrawono in the Ashanti region of the Republic of Ghana in the Kwabre East District. Um, well, uh, during our time, we, we, we did not, you know, have, you know, the real date of birth as it were. And I believe that my date of birth was written somewhere in, in, in some, some, you know, pencil uh, on a wall, which is now completely, you know, eroded. Eroded. And so um, we've tried to find out how old we are. It's very difficult to tell. But, you know, I, I started primary school in, in my, my holy village, went through the middle school during those days. But even before I could get to middle school, in 1962, my father died. And four years after that, my mother also passed on. So between 62 and 66, I'd lost both parents. Perhaps that had you know, strengthened me in, in a manner that, that, that I am today. So I grew up not having parents, as it were. But in our setup, you have an extended family system who are all supportive. And so I have benefited immensely from my uncles and my sisters and brothers and, you know, and, and mothers. You know, in Ashanti region, we don't have things that we call the first cousin or second cousin or so on and so forth. Your brother is a brother, a sister is a sister. So I've immensely benefited from such an extended family system. I went through middle school as it was in those days and then went to secondary school in 1968. At, um, Which secondary school did you, as, you attend? Uh, Bekwai, SDA Secondary School at um, Bekwai Ashanti. And in 1973, I left the O-levels and went on to Konongo Master Secondary School for my A-levels. Yes, course, the great course. From then on, uh, but I think the first time of coming to Accra was when I came to Legon. So, I, I, you know, I, I have had it very well. God has dealt with me, you know, fairly. Perhaps, but for my coming to you know, Legon, I wouldn't have come to Accra. So I'm a typical, you know, you know, village boy and, you know, made good by, by God's own, you know, you know, intervention. So at, at Legon, I studied law, political science and sociology at the first year, went on to read graduate and then move on to read law and call to the bar in 1981. So from 81, you know, it's about 31 years ago, isn't it? 
So we practiced, you know, as lawyer. And from humble beginnings, that I think that um, we, we are where we are today. I, I, you know, when I was a young man, those were the years when in the, in the you know, 60s, you know, when I, I saw it clearly, when, the, um, you know, my father's car was vandalized as a result of one of these elections, local government elections. We so, saw it, oh, we indeed, your father was a you know, politician or? Yes, he, he was. And all my uncles were politicians. They suffered imprisonment, you know, detention, arrest and detention under the CPP regime. Four of my uncles were in detention. And when, when, when I grew up, I saw one of the you know, publications in the, in the newspapers where two of my uncles were given, I think, two years imprisonment and 12 lashes during th that time. Yeah. And um, so they, 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 they suffered imprisonment. And one of them, when he was released, then, you know, those days they could go back and report that, oh, he's come back. So they came back to, re to rearrest my uncle after he accepted his term and said that, you know, he has still not finished. I think not long after that, then there was 1966 coup and then he, 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 he came out. And so, and I missed jubilation. So I, I have come from a background of a family that had been, you know, the Dan Kwebusia tradition. And those days, I remember if you put any of these um, CPP emblem, which was the cockerel, on our door. You know, if you are not careful, you, my uncle will kill you. I remember when I was in primary school, went to the Young Pioneer, you know, we were trained, you know, and to come back to, you know, as it were, train others. My uncle would not allow me to, part you know, to participate in that process because as far as he's concerned, his or children, his, his nephews and nieces are all not CPPs. Therefore, he will not allow us to train. So we had you know, a lot of challenges in school because well, your uncle will not allow you to, to go through the motions. And you know. so, you know, they all went through you know, detention. So that is, I, I believe, that's where I got. So the, these, the, these the things inf from. influence you and you made up. So at what stage in your life did you decide that it is politics you will do? I mean, after having a very successful career, and your, your, your work all along. You just had to leave all of that and go into active politics? Uh. Well, I think from, from my school days, I've always been very active in student politics. You know, uh, you know, so at the University of Ghana, we were very active in the politics of the day. Uh, I remember during our, it was during our time in the 1970s. I went to Lagos in 1976. I left in 1979, so it was about 33 years ago. And it was during that time that you know socialism, socialism was in vogue on the campuses. All the NUCs, executives, the SRCs, JCRs were all you know hardened you politicians. Know, you know, yes, and the, the, the most of the time it was these socialists who, as it were, I mean that's how they were known, who, who, who had taken commanding heights in, in, in those areas. And it was during our time that we broke that genes, and then for the first time. In the politics of Legon, uh, those of us from the right, you know, took over from the left, and so I have been. I've been there. I was a JCR president, and Sabah Hall president, and so uh, my, my politics, you know, perhaps you know, matured as I, I as I moved on in life. But I love politics. I dream and aid and do everything political. I love it. Uh, I, you know, you want to make a difference. You 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 want to serve a country, your country at the highest level. And I think that the only place that we can do so, you know, speaking for myself, is, you know, I, you know being, being in the political, you know, realm. And, and so I have, I have you know, uh, been interested in politics. And um, so I went to London in 1986, thereabout, after I practiced for about four or five years. Over there, we set up, you know, immigration you know, practice. I practiced there, worked, you know, various local authorities, yeah, as we call them. Over there, there are boroughs. Nice. I worked in several landing boroughs. And then um, decided to come back home. You know, from time to time, from 1979, I mean, from 1999, I kept coming to and fro in uh, until 
we, we came to support and won the elections in the year 2001. So 2001 was the first time you came back since you left no, in uh, I mean, 1979. Like you came to settle for good. I came to settle for good in uh, 2002. Because I, I, I felt that we cannot be doing the politics out there. Even though over there, I was the face of the new patriotic party. Everywhere that we went to in London, if we wanted one or two persons who were in the NPP, everybody will refer you to Sir John. And so, yes, we played our part over there, but we decided to come back home. Uh, we were part of the Founding Fathers in 1992, when, when the politics began, and with the likes of the Asamoah Boatins, uh, and come out of blessed memory, and, and so on and so forth. So, and J.H. Manson's escape waffles. So, we were all there, and Dr. J. Bewa. So, we began the process over there, fought actively, and came down to support. So, I felt that we must come home also to play our part, and which is what I did in 2002. And then I came to GMPs in 2002 uh, to 2004. But I realized that that was not where I wanted well, what, to be. What were you doing at GMPC? What exactly was your job function or role at GMPC when you were there? Um, I came there as the uh, director of legal services and administration. And then in 2004, um, the, 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 the deputy managing director, you know, passed on and therefore I was asked to act as the deputy managing director. That was in 2004. But I moved on from there because I wanted to contest the primaries at Old Trafford. And I realized that it was difficult to combine the two because this is a public service or whatever it was. And therefore, we, I was told that... But did you, enjoy, did you enjoy public service? I mean, I want to trace no, it back not, to not quite. How, how you felt coming, returning from abroad and settling in and getting a job in the public service and still being ambitious with politics. How did you enjoy working? It, it, it was difficult to combine the two. You see, I've been in private practice all my life as a lawyer. And that was the first time, well, of course, you know, out there in London, I worked in various boroughs. So... But the regime is quite different. Here in Ghana, and now you are amazed to see that a, a managing director is, say, walking, coming to work, you've got to rise and take his bag, and, you know, and the yes sir, the yes sir, no sir types of things. And the training that I've had in the UK, you know, did not, you know, uh, you know Make call it easy for, that. for you to adjust so, to some of these know, things. You, you, so you, you, when you come back, you, 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 you are very close to the, to the workers, you, you, and you want to assist, you want to help them. But the, you begin to see that that is not how it works here. Uh, it is like, you know, I don't know, but maybe a servant-master relationship, which ought not to be. You know, I, I, you know, I was in, you know, I remember one day in UK, it was raining, the, my boss had, had traveled and he was coming, it was raining, and all these young white guys, they, they just walk past him, they would not you know, take his bag. And I wanted, I rushed to go and take the bag because it was the managing director who was coming. Then he said, no, 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 but, uh, uh, just go and work because you were working. And you could not understand why you should leave your work to come and pick up the bag. But then I said to myself, can you imagine in Ghana, a managing director coming, you, uh, the, an ordinary worker, will not go and take his bag? What will happen to you? So, you know, I think that this master-servant relationship that we have learned from the colonial masters ought to stop. Otherwise, and, and we don't allow people to think, you know, as it were. The system is such that, and can you imagine if your child took up your television and, you know, was playing with it and, 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 and maybe broke it or, say, your iPad and, and smashed it? What will happen? If the mother is not careful, you will divorce the mother because your child has broken your iPad. <laughs> And that is the training that we have here. But over there, the mistake is made. It's all right, next time, don't do this, don't do that. And so they train them to grow. We don't train people to grow. We still see them as kids. If my mother were alive, you would see me as a child. A child. So we, are, we don't allow, the system doesn't allow people to grow. So you come and then you find that you don't fit, as it were, in the system. So, but then again, because of the political, you know, I've been always a, been a political animal. So I was still going on radio to defend the new patriotic party, even though I worked at GMPC. So, you know, and the managing director and that kept... that was conflict uh, of yeah, interest, yeah, right? Director I mean, kept you were declaring your... No, who was the managing that. director at the time? Oh, uh, Amo Boatin, okay. very good friend of mine. You didn't work with uh, Chachu Chikata? Then. No, when you okay. came, Chachu had gone, and, and that was uh, after 2001, 2002. 
So Mo says, don't we can't do this here because you cannot be a public servant and then be going on radio, be doing partisan political activities. But that is what I loved to do. So I went to con compete and contest the Old Tafo seat after the new constituency had been created uh, in 2004, what Dr. Antonio Koto say. He gave me a very good run for, for, for my money. It was a very, very you know, interesting encounter, a bruising encounter at that. I lost the primaries. It was not a very pleasant thing to lose the, you know, the primaries. And uh, I remember I had you know, those who voted against me, those who voted for me. I, I wanted to, to understand to have why a party. they did so, have a party. So I had a party. I called it the loser's party. Because I did not see this as a matter of life and death. I knew that if you, 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 you walked and fell, you rise, dust yourself, and come back and fight again. Because I think it's Bob Mal who says that he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. So I felt that there was another day for me to fight. So there was no need to, 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 to talk myself down. So I dusted myself, I took up the challenge, got a party, and curiously, the number of persons who attended the party were more than those who voted, you know, voted for me. So I said to myself, ah, but if all these persons voted for me, why is it that I lost? Because everybody said, oh, Sir John voted for you. So it was interesting, you know, how to see how human, you know, behavior was in, in, in practice. So I lost in 2004, did not stop from there. I continued to, you know, support the party. I continued to work very hard for this party, even in my private practice. People come to you and say, oh, you're called NPP lawyer and all. And yet, I was not an NPP lawyer. But that is how people saw you. So most of the cases that you did were pro bono. You could not charge for that because people saw you as an MPP lawyer. And we also continue to support. The Are you still soldiers. in practice? I'm not active as it were, but I go from time to time. When I get back to Kumasi, I go to my chambers, see how they are doing and how my junior lawyers are faring and then direct them from time to time. How okay, so you do have happen. chambers? Uh, I do have chambers, okay. yeah. It's, right. it's um, Sir John Chambers. Sir John Chambers, yes. right. Uh, this is PM Express Personality Profile, and my personality tonight is Sir John. We're talking through his life as a person. Now, Sir John, let's talk about your active engagement with politics. Since you returned to Ghana and then worked at GMPC and then later left to, to, to engage yourself in active politics, how would you... Um, how would you gauge the impact you've brought to Ghanaian politics? Well, it is not for me to judge for myself what, whether or not um, my style you know, has been you know, successful. Um, but I think that the mainstream politics here are, are made up of two you know, uh, 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 two extremes. extremes. We, in all the political parties, we have the hawks and the doves. Uh, I, I, I believe that I'm one of the doves in my party. You are? Yes. But you've been described as very aggressive and, I, and forth, forthwith, you know, and that, you know, MPP, the opposition, the, sorry, the NDC and the NDC communication team and other uh, government functionaries have described your, your party stance as aggressive through the or die be die mantra, for example, which you you and your, your flag bearer has have championed? No, um, I think that you need to try understand what, what this concept is all about. Um, we, you know, that, that, that there, are, there are two core groups in every political party. We have the, 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 the core supporters of the party and the, you know, so, so if you looked at the NDC, for instance, their, their core, Supporters are around about 40, 38-40%. NPP's core support is about 45-48%. So in between there, we have the you know, people, the undecided, the persuadables, those that, that, that we need to engage. So it depends on the, 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 the audience that you appeal to. I, I believe that I appeal to those, the grassroots, that is where I belong. Um, I, I have been a grassroots politician all my life. And so I, I, I believe that they need to be given hope. They need to be energized, as it were. 
So that, that, that is the group that it appeals to. So that's your style. And you um, still describe yourself as the Dow. Yes, you know. uh, the Jigs and the Nanakumias and the others of the other party. Oh, they, they, they appeal to the, 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 those of you who are the city guys. You know, that, that, but those of us from the village, I think that we have a way of trying to understand them. And I think that we need to try to understand them. They are not respectful. They understand issues as we or you are you in the cities do understand them, but they have their own way of understanding those issues. So until you you uh, you, you can understand them, you don't you never get it. For instance, I'll tell you why. In two thousand between two thousand one two thousand eight, we, the MPB we've done so well in terms of infrastructure development, you know, school feeding, capitation grant, you know, the free metro mass system, the, the national health insurance scheme, and so on and so forth. All these things. And yet, Ghanaians voted against us. And if you have not lived there, you don't understand. What so it what is. went wrong? What went wrong then, come to in that. your estimation? And it is the, that same thing that, that, is, that the NDC doesn't get. The NDC would fall in 2012 because they are not on earth. They don't get it. They don't understand the people out there. They think that politics is all that is in the city here. Yeah. But it is not. Ghana is bigger than here. And so until you can understand the people out there and then try to understand what they want, you know. I'll give you a typical example. You brought, say, for instance, um, school, feeding, school, school feeding program. If you go to Sakrauno, where I come from, there's no school feeding program there. And therefore, if you tout school feeding program in Wuno as one of the achievements, they don't understand it. Because they, they, they are not, they, they don't feel part of it, they, you know. So you need to try to understand what the people of Uno so want. So you feel that as a person, I mean, as a person and as a politician, having returned and engaging in politics, you have been able to make the grassroots supporters of your party understand the core issues which your party stands for. Is that what you're saying? I think so. And I think that that is why Nane Kufar is doing so well out there. Now people now know him, they feel him, he's gone to the rural areas, he's gone down to the people. So they can now say that this is a Kufadu, we know him, we can feel him, we, we, we've greeted him, we've touched him, we've, we've acted with him. You know, uh, uh, that is what it is. If, if you don't get there, you might think that, you know, it's like when you're talking about corruption here in Accra. Until it is reduced in the language that the ordinary man in the streets understands. Until they can understand that this Wyoming matter, the 51 you know, uh, you know, million Ghana cities paid to Wyoming, how many schools in the rural areas couldn't it have you know, built? How many you know, hospitals couldn't it have provided? How many borehole waters couldn't it have you know, provided? If you look at the schools and the trees alone, the budget for this year or so was 26 million Ghana cities, schools John. and the trees, and yet 52 or so million have been given to one person. So you could see that you could have removed all children from under school and under trees and yet even provided more you know, facilities for Ghanaians. That is how they understand it. It is not sitting here and talking about that. And that is where we you know, make sense to the, the ordinary man in the street. You know, those of you who are privileged to be in Accra, you think you understand the issues. But the people out there understand it in their own way, in their own style. And so some of us appeal to them and that's what we continue to do. And which is why we are winning the elections. Tell us about your family and how you balance family life with politics. Well, um, my, my kids are not here. They are all in London because that's where I, I was before I came down. How many so, kids do you have? Um, well, four. Oh. So uh, three girls and a boy. So they are, they are all there. So basically they have not been part of the mainstream politics. But They've not been part of your struggle. You call it struggle, right? Yes, it is. It must um, be difficult being in opposition. I think so. Um, I think so. But it's also interesting, isn't it? What makes you, it interesting? You learn a lot of lessons and you are, you are humbled by, by where you are. Because sometimes you take you know, things for granted. The NDC now thinks that, you know, when you tell them that it is hard, times are hard, times are tough, tough times are rough, rough they don't get it. They say, oh, it's only MPP people. You are the only people who are crying because they don't get it. They live in on cloud cuckoo land. But when you are, we come down to earth as we are, then you begin to understand that indeed times are rough and hard and tough and that, 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 that there's no money in our pockets and that everywhere that you turn, you turn around, 
like the hymn ministers, all around us is sinking sand. And they don't get it. So until you get to here, where, where, where we are today, that's where you, you then try to understand that it is a privilege to save. And that when that privilege is given to you, you must use it judiciously. And so the MPP, having gone back to position after eight years in government, I think that we've learned so many useful lessons so that when we come to, back to government, and I believe that on the 7th of December, we, we shall, with the support of Ghanaians, come back. Because we represent a party that restores hope. Once we are there, I think that we will, we will do things differently. So when, when, we, you, we when, you're, not, when you're not doing politics, what do you do? What do you do for leisure? I don't, I don't think I have any leisure. All my life is, revolves around politics. I eat and drink and dine politics. I don't go out. I don't know Accra. It's like, like I've told you, I'm from the village, so I've just come. It's a JJC. Johnny just come. So I, I've just come to Accra. So if you ask me, when I was coming here, a friend drove me to this place. Otherwise, I'll get lost. So I'm, are you I, are you serious? Yeah. About so that? I'm, I'm always <laughs> I, I'm always at home, I, 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 I listening to the BBC, the CNN, or multi TV, multi TV, and, and then more importantly, my music. What kind of I music love, do you enjoy? So my my at Ishra, my, my my television is always at Ishra, where they play all the you know Christian and gospel music. And so from morning to evening, if I'm home. Apart from the one or two few hours that I switch on to, you know, listening to the news, it is always at a So you would describe yourself as a spiritual person? Um, it is not what you say you are, but yeah, maybe, like I've said, Shakespeare once said in, in Gino Caesar, he asked, uh, at the Cassius, who, who asked, uh, you know, Brutus, he asked him, can the eye see itself? Then the answer is no, not by, except through the mirror. So you cannot see your, your So take me as the mirror and so tell me. The mirror that, um, that, that determines that tell me not. how you relate with God, maybe. Well, I, I am a seven day Adventist, born and bred in it, and I've been a seven day Adventist all my life. I love, you know, to serve God. I love to you know, do good to people, if that is called good. Um, because it is not for me to determine that what I'm doing is good or, or otherwise. So you can't but say that you're spiritual or not spiritual. I, 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 you know, man look at, at, the, at the outward, but God look at, at the inward. And therefore, I'm not going to sit here and say that I am spiritual or, or otherwise. It is for God to determine. I don't know the day. Let's take a step back to your time at GMPC. I mm -hmm. mean, as Director of Legal Services and Administration, do you, did you get the opportunity to learn about oil production at all? Yes, you, you do. And, um, you know, from time to time, especially after I had come, the, 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 the vocabulary was something that was difficult to comprehend initially. But you get the director of exploration, Thomas, who has been a very good friend. They, they will take you through the motions and lecture you about, you know, the terms that they use and so on and so forth. But I was more particularly interested in the drafting of the agreements that as people came, what and what we had to do and what went in us in terms of the law. And then you manage the, 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 the administrative aspect of it. It's all in your hands. So we had the, 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 the directorate, director for exploration, director for finance, finance. I was in charge of our admin and legal services. So these were the directorates that we had. And um, but Thomas, like I said, you, know, you had to learn. Because everything that you did was about you know, the exploration. And, and when we, uh, we had a challenge. The challenge was to find oil. And that was the mandate given to us by the, the, the Jacob Four and his, his, his government. And he says we should stop all the non-core activities of GMPC. At that time, we were into farming, we were into salt, uh, salt, exploration. salt exploration, we were into this, we were into that, you know, and we had wrecks all over the world, you know, and yet we have not found anything here. So do so your, short, your short stint with GMPC, what were some of the successes you could relate to which I'm sure you would add to your CV, you know, and your career progression. What are think, some of the successes? I think one of the things that, that we, we all did, and we can, it cannot be attributable to one person, because it was a teamwork. And, and, and we paid tribute to all the workers of GMPC. They gave their best. They worked very hard, in spite of the meager, you know, salary that, 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 that we had, to ensure that we struck oil. And it was during when I was there that the, the, the EO group came, and then I was part of the, the team that, that interviewed them, took them through the motions, 
and thank God the block that was given to them, that was where we first struck oil. And I was, I'm particularly pleased about that. And I think that uh, it, it, it opened the floodgates and as it were, opened the, the way for more exploration and more finds to, to be had. So, so, so I, yeah. I, I was very pleased to be part of that. Of that, success. right. So would you say that Ghana as a country is on the right path with our oil production in terms of the um, legal environment and revenue management, for example? Yes, I think, I think that we are. But you see, we, we have the benefit of the misfortune of other countries like Nigeria and elsewhere. And therefore, we cannot afford to make those mistakes that others made. And, and so for us, you know, we, we, we are guided and goaded by, by <coughs> uh, excuse me, by that. Um, what we need to do is not to abandon the traditional areas of agri agriculture, as Nigeria did, uh, 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 you know, to their dismay. And so we need, as we even have oil, we need also to ensure that the other sectors do not collapse and to pin our hopes all on the oil. But beyond that, you know, we, it needs to be managed well so that it doesn't become a case as it was we all appear to be touting. Um, so far, I'm not very sure whether or not uh, 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 the management is, is, is proper. Um, you know, we have had, you know, but of course, as, uh, you, know, we had, you know, we move gingerly as we progress mistakes will be made, so and so forth. But we haven't got into where we think that this will be properly managed. For instance, how could the country go and borrow money from, say, China, and use the, the, our oil as collateral? And when in parliament, people were saying, look, let us be careful, so that, as it were, we don't use, you know, the whole thing as collateral. John Mama insulted all of us and called them, you know, fools, you know, for thinking that we should reserve that in order, you know, for future generations to I don't, I don't to, to recall progress. exactly uh, John oh, uh, um, Mahama it was. Uh, saying he, anybody it was. was a fool. Yes, he, he did. And and he because he felt that we, we don't have to, you know, reserve it when when the current generation are suffering. And therefore, we need to use it. Which is why they are collateralizing that by getting a lot of loans and using our oil, oil, oil proceeds as that. So if we are not careful, by the time the next government comes, which is the Kufuadis government, we will not have even the benefit of the use of the oil process because it, it had all been mortgaged. For, for, so, for, so for tell me, I mean, it's, it's easy to complain, but what will be the alternative for the MPP? Well, we, I think in that... In managing the oil revenue in terms of the legal environment and revenue management for our oil. We have, we have said that, you know, portions should be set apart so that you know you don't, as it were, put them all in the same kitty, and, and, and then because you see, if they are all in the same kitty, like the consolidated fund, and then government starts using them, then you don't know which one you are using. So we felt that we should reserve a certain portion, so that that could be used, you know, you know, judiciously, you know, as a country, and then we know that maybe we have A, B, C, D, E projects to fund. So every year, if we say we are building road infrastructure in this country, we use the proceeds to do so. How could you go, for instance, go for a $3 billion loan from China to use the oil proceeds to do that? When you know that without even that loan, for every year, the revenue that is accruing from that, you could still gradually build the, the country. Why would you want to you know, decide that, oh, I want to build the whole country at a go one day, and, and then therefore for the next 20 years, you don't have the benefit of your oil, oil process. It doesn't make sense. And, and the future, the, 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 the youth who are coming will not be happy to see that they don't have the benefit of the oil that, 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 that we are producing in this country because it has been mortgaged by one particular government. You know, uh, for, there, for, for there are some who would also argue that your party, the MPP, has been unnecessarily critical of the, the Mills administration before he passed away. And now you are, you know, as a convention shifting to Mahama administration. How do you respond to that? No, uh, see, people should distinguish uh, the, 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 the person from, from, from the governance. You had you issues know, with the person of Mills? No, not at all, we did not. But you had he, issues he, with he, his he, governance yes, style? Yes, the style and the way that he was managing the economy. We thought that, and not only us, Rollins also believed the same, and most Ghanaians believe that Ghana was being driven 
in the wrong direction and that the, the driver of the vehicle was asleep and that we were, we were being driven in, into the ditch. And, 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 and that, and, and Rawlings put it clear, you know, as to where we were going. And Ghanaians also saw where we were going. Just, just this morning, I spoke to a lady, a businesswoman in Kumasi, who you know, sells uh, mobile phones, uh, you know, is in that business. And she was telling me, said, look, said John, if you spend 100,000 Ghana cities for purposes of, you know, your trading, which is one billion, old billion, now the 100,000 Ghana cities that, 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 that you needed for, say, $90,000 or $100,000, or just a little bit, you add a little bit, so you can get $100,000 easily. Now you know what you have to do? Instead of, say, 110,000 Ghana cities for, say, $100,000, you need to have over 200,000 Ghana cities in order to get the same you know, $100,000 that you needed. So, in effect, businesses are collapsing as a result of the you know, mismanagement of the economy and, and, and the free fall of the city. That is what we have been talking about. And that if you're a businesswoman or businessman, and then you plot, you plan your life around the, the dollar, the exchange rate, and now you begin to see that there's a free fall, and such that you need to have more CDs, you know, to change for the same, you know, number of dollars that you used to, to go, go out just some few months ago, then it doesn't help. So, but when you talk about it, they tell you that, oh, it's only NPP people who are crying because you're hungry. It is not NPP people, Ghanaians of all walks of life. There's no job in this country. Students, for the first time in the history of the Ghana's politics, unemployed to address a situation formed. What, I mean, what is this country heading for? So the, the country needs to have hope. We need to restore hope. And the Kufa represents that hope. And that is what we, we, we give to the Ghanaian. Sir so John, let's continue with a little bit of the politics. You had a very personal relationship with Professor Mills because he was your, your, your lecturer, yeah. your law lecturer at the University of Ghana. That's true. Now he's passed on. And I said earlier that your party was very critical of his administration. But you were saying that it's, it's the, the person is different from his governance. So it means that in real terms, you see Mr. Uh, Professor Mills as a fine gentleman. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry. And yes, because, you know, I, I, let me ask you this simple question. If your mother were ill or your father were ill and you took the father to the hospital, and he had to be operated upon. And there were two surgeons, one a very competent surgeon, and one a very nice looking young surgeon, fine Christian surgeon. Which of these two surgeons would you prefer to operate upon your mother? I know my answer. I'll go for a competent surgeon. I'll not go for God-fearing Christian, so, you know, good, you know, calm, peaceful surgeon. No. I'll go for a competent surgeon. And that is what this country requires. Competent leadership. You haven't answered leadership, the question about your well, relationship well, with Mills. Leadership <laughs> that, 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 that you know, solves the bread and butter issues. You know, things that matter to Ghanaians. That is what Ghanaians are looking for. And so the, the person could be a hawk. But as long as the person delivers, I think that that's what the country is looking for. So yes, Prof was a very nice man. Christian, everybody speaks about that. You know, calm, cool. That was what it was. But I do not think that, like Victor also said of the PMP, with of blessed memory, he said the PMP is a government of good intentions. But good intentions alone do not make good governance. So yeah, the person could be calm, he could be good, he could be a Christian, he could be that. But that is not what it takes to put you know, food on the table. So Ghanaians were not criticizing males in his personal capacity as males. But they were looking at governance. And then in terms of governance, we, uh, like the example I gave to you, that is where we are. Ghanaians are suffering under the last three and a half years or four years of this NDC's administration. Ghanaians are, you so know, tell me, so changed. tell me, what has the NDC government got right? Have they got everything wrong as far as you are concerned? It is for them to point one thing that they've done, they've gotten right. You tell me. But before, as far as I'm concerned, they haven't. Which is why Ghanaians are crying for the return of the new patriotic Nothing party. Nothing at all? At all. And I'll tell you why. To whom much is given, much is required. When we were in government for eight years, we did not have the benefit of oil. Proceeds. We didn't. But oil proceeds just started coming in. 
that's just we a did, few but, months but ago. Prices of cocoa went up, prices of gold up, prices of every commodity that you can think of under the, uh, the, 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 the NDC has gone up. Oil prices have stabilized, unlike during our time. And yet, for, 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 for since Nkrumah to Busia, uh, Nkrumah to Jericho, I think the total debt, debt bed, burden, I'm told, was about $9 billion or, or, or so. The, the NDC chapter 3 alone, uh, that is under John Mama, NDC, alone had taken about $25 billion, a debt burden from about $9 billion to about $25 billion. We have not even added the three billion and other loans that are coming. So they have taken more loans than any other government in the history of our politics. And yet there's nothing to show for. That is that that is that is the difference. And that is why people are worried. And look, if you say that you have inflation at single digit, and like Dr. Baumia says, if these are there, it must reflect the microeconomics, the, the job job it should lead to creation of jobs and so on and so forth. But you have the highest unemployed people in this country under this well, it's, administration. It's, for PM Express tonight, I think it's a bit unfair that we don't have the NDC here to match your oh, your, right. your your allegations no, and the things you're saying. No, these are practical, you know, these are factual things which we speak to. We speak to. So let's 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 you, shift, you, let's you, shift you, our attention. You know, to, you know of the unemployed graduate situation, and never in the history of this country have we had that. And I've given you an example of the business, typical businesswoman who has to find, a, a, you know, another hundred thousand Ghana cities in order to change for the same number dollars that she, she used to have. And what kind of business can you run to, to get there? So any loan that you contract, you cannot pay because you are already down. And that is the economy that has been bequeathed to us by John Mama. Say because John. he has been largely in charge of the economic management team. He himself at, uh, alludes to that. Fact. And which is why Ghanaians will not give him the keys to run Sergio, the government. Let's, let's shift our attention to the burial place of Professor Mills. Will any of your uh, MPP leaders, when they become president and when they pass on, would they wish to be buried at the Asumje Park where uh, Mills has been laid? Do we have a park called Asumje Park? Geese Park, it was called. Uh, now Geese it's park. called oh, Asumje okay. Park. Okay, I, don't, I didn't know the name. I thought it was called Geese Park. It used to be called Geese Park. It has right. been renamed Asumjee So that's Park. where uh, they want everybody to bury all of us. I'm asking whether um, when your party leaders become presidents and they pass on, you, your party will feel comfortable for them to be laid there. Well, it is not for me to determine where a, anybody is, a, 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 is buried. It is not for me. I think that when the person dies, it is a matter for the pair, uh, uh, family members to determine where the person will ought to be buried. I, I would wish to be buried at uh, Sakra Uno, certainly not, not in Accra, you know. And so, the, the, if, if... But anybody, you don't want to be a president. I mean, what about your, your well, I mean, former President Kufoy is still alive. Yes. I don't wish that bad things should happen. But should he pass on today? Would, would your party hierarchy wish that he's buried at the Asum J so, Park? Um, you know, I, I have not read J. Kufoy's will. I, I don't know what is in his will. And therefore, I will not be able to speak to that. But uh, I, you know, I think that he has about 30 more years to live, or, or, or more, or thereabout. But which time maybe I would have gone earlier. So I, I cannot determine where he, he he might want to be buried. So I'll leave it at that. But the nine graves, what I'm told, is, there's nine, isn't it? I don't know whether they envisage that nine president will die, or, or what. I, I don't understand. Uh, it is not traditional, uh, uh, you know, to do that. Um, and I, I don't know why, you know, somebody wants to prepare graves for others even before, before they pass on. And well, I don't they're not know exactly how, graves. I, I, they're I, like I, I, demarcations I don't know. I don't where know. graves know. could be dug. Well, we are told that they have already been dug them and that there are nine, nine, nine dug you know, graves. And, and, and it, it, it baffles me why anybody that should, should do that. Maybe uh, after after the but why why should it baffle you if the the current government with the advice of the funeral planning committee are thinking if it, if it thinking ahead that, planning that, ahead nine, there's nothing wrong planning nine presidents ahead presidents will die and therefore how about if there are twenty where, where are we going to there's nothing wrong planning ahead well I, I you know I, I don't envy them for, for doing that but I think that maybe it's all part of the the the, 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 the you know when when the accounts of the funeral comes to be to be to be you know taken. Maybe all the nine will be you know I don't know how much one one cost, but so maybe that is why we had nine. 
Otherwise, for me... Now, Sir John, quickly, I won't, I won't leave you without uh, talking about politics of insults. There have been, there've been discussions of politics of insults all over the airwaves, and uh, the West Africa Media Foundation has done uh, monitoring, monthly monitoring of uh, political leaders who are engaging in politics of insults. Is your party engaged in politics of insults? No, we are not. Do you think the other parties are engaged in politics of insults? We are not. I can speak only for the MPP. But I know the NDC is a party of indiscipline, they insult, you know, to, to, to the marrow. And but your party, Akufado, your party also had no, Akufado, have these, have Akufado, these Akufado, people. Akufado had been vilified, uh, maligned, insulted than any other politician that I have ever, you know, know seen in the, in the history of our politics. He's been sorted, What's going know, to be your party by, strategy, by, the way forward? We don't have a lot of time. Way forward, so that we, there we, will be we, decent we, uh, we, we, we have, engagement in the yes, political we, issues. We have ad ad advised our people to speak to the issues. It's the politics of issues that will win as elections. Having now, Ghanaians having now noted that the NDC is incompetent and that they cannot take us to our destination. And gingerly, we have said that, like a spare tie, they should move us gradually to our destination in 2012, 7th of December, and then by 2013, January, then we'll put in the new time. Sir John, let me quickly ask move you, on us on. what would you do when your, your party loses the 2012 election? What would be your, your career way forward? I, I cannot see that uh, MPP would lose, and, and that I, I can only, uh, you know, we can only win the elections, and we, are, we, have, we have only one option, either to win the elections or to win the elections. At all and, costs? The, and, no, not at all costs. You must at, win at, at all, all costs. All die, be die. These are the things that people say against your party. Really. Of course, why wouldn't you win the elections? And then DC is gerrymandering, trying to get more, you know, uh, uh, constituencies there, so that when they lose the uh, uh, presidential elections, they may be able to take the parliamentary elections. That is what they are doing. They are desperate. We are not. We 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 are a party that is focused. We believe that Ghanaians understand the issue. We respect the, the, the people of this country to make the right choice and I think that come seventh of December they will right, make the right choice and get Anana Kufuado and Dr. Baumia to run the, the affairs of this country and never again shall we allow the driver who wrecked the vehicle to come near the, the new car that we are going to buy. Thank you very much Kwejo Ozo Free uh, popularly known as Sir John he was my guest tonight on PM Express